Why do remote desktops feel so clunky and disconnected? Locked away in a third-party app that doesn't quite fit? What if they felt native, like a true extension of your desktop? Meet XPRA, an open-source remote desktop solution that goes beyond just screen sharing. Clipboard sharing, drag-and-drop file transfer, audio webcam and printer forwarding, it's all there. Now add GPU acceleration, robust security, cross-platform support, and get this, you can access remote desktops directly in your browser. No extra plugins needed. Stick around as I walk you through XPRA and even push it to the extreme with gaming on a remote desktop. Let's get started. I am now here on the official XPRA GitHub page and it stands for Persistent Remote Applications for X11, which is a Linux and Unix display server protocol, but this one also supports macOS and Windows. It can operate in three different modes and the first one is seamless mode. This one allows remote applications to run directly on your desktop, as if they were native applications running locally. And this is how it looks like. So here we have two remote applications displayed on a Windows desktop. This is similar how WSL Linux applications look and feel as native on Windows, or how X11 forwarding over SSH looks on a Unix machine. But the difference is that if you get disconnected from an SSH session, the program crashes with the session, but here you can disconnect and connect back to the session without losing any state. The same is also true for the other two modes, which are starting a new remote desktop session, where you get a full featured desktop instead of a single app, and sharing an existing desktop session, also called the shadow mode, which is what most people are already doing using VNC and RDP. At the time of recording, this shadow mode is the only way how you can share remote desktops on Windows and Mac OS, but for instance, if you're using Linux, you have all three modes available. One thing you do get on all platforms is an HTML5 client, which actually does not run on the client, but on the remote machine, and which makes the shared desktop available in any average web browser over HTTP. Now this is very interesting and makes XPRA a real competitor to VNC and RDP, because with this all you need to access the remote desktop is just a web browser. No special tools, no plugins, no extra software. This is awesome. Now, HTML5 clients also exist for VNC and RDP, but you don't get them out of the box. Those are extra tools. Some are even closed source and not free. In the case of XPRA, being part of the same general solution should in theory make the HTML client more reliable, stable, and probably better optimized. With this, XPRA should have an edge over VNC and RDP. That's the big picture of what XPRA can do. Now enough talk, let's see it in action. Here is how you can set it up and start using it right away. In this video, we will focus on Windows and Linux. Let's do Windows first. To install XPRA on Windows, on the GitHub page, find the installation section. Here, download the MSI and install it. I already did that. Then there is one additional thing that you need to do. You need to add one environment variable environment variables, add a new one, XPRA Win32 workspace, and the value 0. This is more like a workaround for Windows, probably you don't need to set it at all, but for the version that I'm using this is required, otherwise it won't work. So let's close that. Now let's start XPRA. This is it. It looks a bit weird, especially the buttons here, but it should do. Now you don't need to use the GUI, you can also start XPRA using the command line. There you have even more options available. The command line is also the recommended way how to use it, but if you really can't live without a GUI, here you have it. On Windows you can only share your existing desktop, which is called the shadow mode. Here you have a button for it, just click it and it should start the pre-configured shadow session. So let's do it. Now if I move my head out of the way, then down here, you should see that the shadow session is running. And if you go to browse, here you can also see all the channels how the server can be accessed. Now what I will do now, I will go to my Linux machine and try to connect to the remote desktop from there. I am now here on my Linux machine. I will open the browser. Now I will enter the IP address of the Windows remote desktop. 
This is the login screen of the HTML5 client running on the host. The screen recording is a bit off. I can barely see what it says here on the buttons, but on my screen, this looks okay. So I would just assume that something's wrong with the recording. Now we need to log in here. And by default, the username and password are from the user running the host session. In this case, this is the Windows user. So let's enter the credentials. And now to enter the password, you can either click connect, then it will use the unsecure HTTP connection and you will be prompted to enter the password. Or if you're using a certificate, you can also do a secure connection. And now you can enter the password here. But in my case, I don't have a valid certificate. So I will just continue with an unsecure connection and I will enter the password in plain text. Now, before I connect down here, you have advanced options and here, you can, for instance, set a bandwidth constraint, specify the encoding, set the keyboard layout, enable clipboard, printing, file transfer, audio forwarding with the codec. So the client can also specify what it needs. In my case, the defaults are okay. And now let's connect. And this is it. I'm now accessing my Windows machine from inside the browser. Let's make it full screen, F11. Perfect. I have no full control over the machine and I'm also recording here using OBS. So now you can see this kind of inception here. Let's close that. Now, if I want to disconnect, I can just close the browser. Now, as I've demonstrated on the client side, you only need a browser to access the remote machine. But if you want a more seamless experience, better integrated into your desktop, then you need to install XPRA also on the client. In my case, I'm running Cache OS, which is an Arch-based distro, and I installed full Cache OS on a USB drive, and this one is running from the USB drive right now. So if you want to install Cache OS on a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. To install XPRA on an Arch-based distro, you need to open the terminal. And now here, this is the command. It is a bit long because you need to install all the different dependencies. Otherwise, some features of XPRA might not work, like for instance, the audio, printer, or webcam forwarding. And also something important to mention, XPRA only works with Pulse Audio and not with Pipewire. So let's install that. Of course, a sudo. It's installed. And now one additional thing, at the time of recording, there is no HTML5 client available on Arch Linux. So we need to get the source and build it ourselves. On the XPRA HTML5 client GitHub page, you can find the install from source code. So let's just copy this line by line into the terminal. And of course the install script run with sudo. And that's about it. XPRA is fully installed. For the second example, let's say I want to share a single window on Linux. This time I will use the terminal xpra start then the virtual display number and i want to share the cache browser and it should be accessible over tcp on port 10000 let's run it the session is now running in the background so if i do now xpra list i can now see the sessions that are running and there is only one session at the display number 100 now on Linux, you don't even need to start the sessions explicitly. You can just enable SSH and start all the sessions directly from the client. And that's what I will do. So let's enable SSH, start SSH daemon. Let's see if it's running. Perfect. And now I will go back to my Windows machine and continue from there. Back to the Windows machine, let's now connect to the remote session. If we want to connect to an existing session, just go to connect. I want to connect over TCP, username is OK, now the IP address of the remote Linux machine and the port, as we specified, 10,000. On the Linux machine, I did not specify any authentication method, so I can just connect without password. So yes, if you're starting sessions from the command line, you need to be specific about authentication, otherwise it will be without it. And let's connect. This is now the Cache OS browser running on the remote machine. Let's try it out. Is your Linux desktop too mainstream? Always stuck with the same old features and broken extensions? Wayfire is here to shake things up. The lightweight. So you also get audio here. 
It works actually really well. It's not perfect, but you can work with it. Another cool thing is that this is just a window on your desktop. It's not like it's trapped inside some weird container. Another cool thing is that we can also access this one from inside the browser on the client, as we did with the Windows desktop on Linux. Let's now disconnect from the session. Disconnect. Now let's open the browser, the IP address and the port. And here is the browser as we left it. And all of this inside another browser. Let's try another example. Let's say I want to start a new session directly from the client over SSH, then go to start. Again, let's try a seamless session. SSH is what we want. Then the username, host IP address, port 22. And now let's say I want to start PCMan FM, the file manager. Start and attach. This is the first time that I'm connecting over SSH. So yes, I confirm. And the SSH password. And here it is. This is now the PCMan FM file manager running on the remote host. And as you can see, it's displayed as just another window on my desktop. And it feels like it's actually running locally. Let's try to run the terminal here. All right. The terminal is also running on the remote machine. And as you can see, the window manager is XPRA. Let's try BTOP. Perfect. If you're using WSL on Windows, then this feels very familiar. Now that you know how XPRA works, it's time to push the boundaries. Can it handle gaming remotely? Let's find out. I will open another terminal. And here I will run Steam. And I want to run Steam using the dedicated GPU on my machine. And on CashOS, the command for it is Prime Run. Let's try it out. Here is Steam. Now let's try to run Desperados. And I also want to run this one using my dedicated GPU. So that's OK. And play. It works. Let's try it out. So it is playable. So the GPU usage is at 55%. This is on the remote machine. We need to get his attention elsewhere. Sure. Glad I picked up these. Follow me. Keep your head down. Sure thing. Now it's lagging like crazy, I'm not gonna lie. The video quality is okay, but you notice that the video is streamed, so sometimes you get artifacts. This would be unplayable for an FPS shooter, definitely, but this one... Well... Let's say maybe if you really, really have no other option to play it. As we saw, XPRA is an incredibly powerful tool that changes the way how we think about remote desktops. If you enjoyed this, then make sure to check out my previous video on the Wayfire desktop environment, which I showcased earlier. It's packed with features that you definitely don't see every day. The video is up there. Go and watch it. If you like this video, then give it a like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.